Good morning, babies. You know what I noticed looking back over my life? Every time something happened to me, I was always in a place I wasn't supposed to be. I was always somewhere else than where my parents thought I was. So this one particular story, I was supposed to be in school. But instead, I went to a friend's house and I changed my clothes and I had this beautiful white dress. I was gonna meet my friends at the movies. It was a one o'clock show in the afternoon because school time, you know? So I was standing there waiting and there was nobody there, which was so odd, you know, my friends would usually meet me. And then this man came up to me and he said, um, hey, he called some of my friends' names. <clears throat> he says, you gotta show me something, it's in the house here. And all them girls, they, they're, all them girls already seen it. Cool. So I go in there, I f start walking in the yard. And suddenly I had a feeling of apprehension and I tried to turn around and he had a knife behind. <laughs> He stuck the knife in my back. Not stabbed me, but he stuck it and he told me to keep walking. And I kept walking. I walked to the house, the back of the yard. This was next to a cinema called Aster Cinema on Waterloo Street. I don't think it's called Waterloo Street anymore. I think it's called Kwamina. The back house, there were seven men waiting for me. Him included. And they all took their turns. And one of them said, I can't even get hard. You think I'm enjoying this? And I looked at him. That was the first one I actually looked at with my eyes, you know. And all I said was, you're gonna die. You're gonna die. They finished doing whatever it was that they were doing. They told me to get dressed. And they basically threw me out the house. So here I was in the afternoon, all screwed up in my head, not knowing what to do. So the first time this ever happened when I was 13, this was the second time, another 16 year old story. So I did the right thing, I went to my father. My father was 6'2", big strapping man. Nobody could beat him. I went to my father. I did the right thing this time, I didn't hide. And I told my father what happened. And my father said, you deserved it. You deserved it. He was living with his woman at the time. I remember leaving and going home to my home where we all used to live as a family when he was there. And I didn't tell anyone after that. I kept it to myself. But then as the years went on, I shared. So the reason for telling you this story is this. You know, for many, many years, right? I carried that. I carried it. I carried it like a trophy. I carried it. And I punished myself for, it. for all the traumas that happened in my life. I, I traumatized myself a thousand times over. These things we don't have to hold. We don't have to carry them forever. We honestly can let them go. We can look within and we can forgive ourselves. It was something that happened. It was not nice. It was horrible. But I had to experience that to be who I am today. A 
as painful and as traumatic as it was, I started healing. And I started facing all these memories. And you know what happened? Something really beautiful happened. I started crying. I stopped drinking. I started smiling more. My heart started opening up. I started being kinder to myself, although that's still a struggle. <laughs> Sometimes I find myself pouring out too much and nobody pouring in. But that's a balance I have to achieve. I have to harmonize that. I have to still do a lot of healing. But I'm here to tell you it's possible. And I love you no matter what traumas you've been through, babies? We can make it through. We can do this. And we will do it together. I love you dearly. And don't ever think you're alone. Because you're not alone, you hear me? You're not alone. I am here. And I'm setting up a way where you'll be able to make contact with me, okay? I love you dearly.